G'day everyone. For those of you that don't know me, my name is David Kramer. I'm a director of Future Fish Foundation and I'm also the host of Melbourne's Talking Fishing TV. Now, what I want to talk about tonight at the Talk Wild Trout Conference is one of the best brown trout wild populations that I think, uh, certainly in Victoria, but if not Australia, if not the Southern Hemisphere. And it's exciting and I'm going to tell you why. Firstly, I should say uh, a big thanks to the, the Victorian Fisheries Authority, Travis Dowling and the team for making the Talk Wild Trout Conference happen because it's been a bloody tough year this year and uh, to, you know, to keep the show rolling is just something that's fantastic. I've been to all bar one of the conferences and I love them when they're up in Mansfield. We're not in Mansfield, but that's okay. Uh, coming to you online, almost as good. Now, a few years ago, in fact, probably 15 years ago, I must say, um, I fished a lake in Tasmania called Woods Lake and I was accompanying fisheries and we were looking at a few things there and doing a bit of filming. And we were there during spawning season and we actually went up the river that feeds into Woods Lake and I witnessed something that was absolutely incredible, a wild brown trout fishery, uh, a spawning run in this river that was you know, easily less than a metre deep and I'm talking dozens and dozens and dozens of um, these big, you know, two foot long brown trout. Amazing to see. And I just thought, wow, this is this is just unique. You know, you, it's the sort of stuff that you see in a TV ad or whatever. I guess wind the clock forward um, 15 years now. Uh, and, I, you know, I just had a thought and a vision, I guess, a couple of years ago that I reckon we've got something like that in Victoria. Uh, we've got this wild population of brown trout that are two foot long and unfortunately they're locked behind a fence. Now the place uh, is, is a very special place, it's called Tarago Reservoir and uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a minute but um, leading into the 2018 state government election uh, we talked to the Premier of Victoria, when I say we, the Future Fish Foundation, talked to the Premier of Victoria, Daniel Andrews, and he appeared on Talking Fishing TV back in 2018, and this is what he had to say about Tarago Reservoir. We've got an opportunity, I think, to allow kayakers and other smaller craft with uh, electric motors onto a whole lot of different waterways that they're currently not allowed to be part of. Okay. Um, I have, I've got a list. Yes, this show's all about lists. So right? this is in the list. On my list, there's a couple that aren't here, and I want to say something about that at the end, okay. but uh, Tullaroop, Lauriston, Hepburn, Barker's Creek, Upper Colliban, and Malmesbury Reservoirs. Mm -hmm. They'll all be, uh, for those smaller craft with uh, electric motors and kayaks, we think that's just a, a smart thing to do. Again, yeah. opening up access, allowing more and more families to be able to engage in spaces that really belong to them, ultimately. Yeah. Um, Tarago's not on there. I know, and that's something that you and I have talked about, Devil Bend as well. We've just got a yeah. bit, little bit more consultation to go through. I'm very keen to make Tarago happen if we can. Yeah. So there it is. We have a little bit of a plan to have a look at it and potentially open it up to recreational fishing. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the place now. And uh, only recently, July 2020, uh, the boys from Arthur Ryler Institute went in and did a, a fish survey and there were some exceptional results. So let me talk a little bit about the reservoir first. The Tarago Reservoir is located uh, north of Warrigal uh, in West Gippsland. It's approximately 100 kilometres east of Melbourne, so easily a day trip for visitors from Melbourne. And when you get to see some of the photos of the fish very shortly that are in this reservoir, this is certainly a destination that people could travel interstate to and almost international too, because uh, if it ends up being as good as I think it will be, it will be well known in the trout circles for you know for a, a, a unique place to go fishing. Um, the reservoir was constructed from rock fill with a clay core, and it was completed in 1969, so it's not that old, and it was enlarged in 1971. Tarago Reservoir was closed to fishing in 1977, so many people had what, six years to fish it? That would have been a special time, I reckon. And it was closed to minimise the risk of contamination of domestic water supplies to the Mornington Peninsula. In 1994, Melbourne Water stopped using water from the reservoir as it had become unsuitable for drinking. But following the construction of a water treatment plant, the reservoir was reconnected to the Metropolitan Water Supply 
in 2009. Now, it's got a big fence around it. You can't get into Tarago Reservoir at the moment. Uh, a little bit about the water in there. Based on Tarago Reservoir water storage records, the maximum storage level is 26 metres. Since 1975, when the dam was constructed, the level has been above 23 metres for 37 of the last 46 years. The lowest storage level was recorded in May 1980 at 18.7 metres and April 2007 at 18.9 metres. So it holds good water um, most of the time. Now, there's some unbelievable uh, records around uh, stocking at this place and stocking of the Tarago River, so just the river, this is before the reservoir was built, uh, it first occurred in 1898 and um, it's, it's quite incredible that they've got those sort of records, but there was a, um, a story about it in the leader in uh, Melbourne on the 22nd of October, 1898. It was actually on page 18, if anyone's still got a copy of that newspaper. I'm sure if Ross Wynn Stanley's watching this, he will probably have a copy. Um, 800 brown trout fry from the Geelong hatcheries was, were released back then in 1898. From then until 1969, the river was stocked mostly with brown trout with more frequent stocking occurring after 1930. Generally, up to 3,000 fish were stocked each year, but in 1961, it must have been a big year, 30,375 brown trout were released. Rainbow trout were only stocked into the river on two occasions. That was in 1916 and 1964. Since its construction, the Tarago Reservoir was stocked annually with rainbow trout from 1969 to 1976. 5,000 to 43,000, somewhere in between that each year. Again, you can see the graph up on the screen and it just shows how many fish were stocked. Since its construction, the Tarago Reservoir was stocked annually with rainbow trout from 1969 to 1976, between 5,000 and 43,000 fish. But no brown trout was stocked into the reservoir. Stocking ceased presumably as a result of the reservoir being closed to fishing in 1977. No other fish species have been stocked into these waters. Despite extensive stocking of the reservoir with rainbow trout between 1969 and 1975, and suggestions from anglers that the species may be present above the reservoir, rainbow trout have not been recorded in any fishery survey and may no, no longer be present in the reservoir nor the river. There's just no sign of rainbow trout. The size of the trout. Now, I went up and spent a day with Jason and uh, I'm hopeless with names, he's offsider. I'll just call him my old mate. So Jason and old mate, they had the Electra fishing out and did, to do this survey and I went and joined them. And um, I, was, I was just absolutely blown away back in July to see, I guess, the quality of fish, the size of the fish and the abundance, and, and I'm, I'm not telling a lie when I say you couldn't walk another five metres without finding another fish. Every five metres was a monster brown. It was remarkable. Uh, brown trout in the reservoir, uh, they ranged in total length from 40.2 centimetres, so that was the smallest fish that could be found in the reservoir, and were up to 64.8 centimetres. They averaged considerably larger than brown trout in the river, which was 7.6 centimetres, so there were some smaller ones found in the river, but up to 63.5 centimetres. Now, I reckon I had photos taken with about 30 fish that were all between 50 and 63 centimetres. They're absolutely remarkable fish. In both the 2010 and 2020 surveys, recruits, which are fish that are less than 12 centimetres, were present in low numbers only in the river above the reservoir and were absent from the reservoir but results dominated the catch in the river above the reservoir in the March 1993 survey, the same month as the 2010 survey. These observations suggest that strong recruitment does occur in the Tarago River from time to time, but not every year. The size range of brown trout in Tarago Reservoir is exceptional when compared to other Victorian lakes and reservoirs surveyed in winter using mesh nets. Brown trout from 2010 and 2020 surveys were within the top 10 size ranges for unexploited populations such as Tarago Reservoir. Typically, they have a high proportion of larger, older fish uh, are present. Many of the other Victorian lakes and reservoirs surveyed that are exported and fished 
to a lesser or greater extent, which can reduce the average size of fish and percentage of fish over the legal size limit. Now, a little bit about what they're eating. Uh, might blow you away this one too. The stomach contents of 21 brown trout were examined. Now that means that Jason, an old mate, took home 42 fillets, I'm tipping. Good on you boys. 30%, 33% of which were empty. 33% contained trout eggs and 28% with goldfish and unidentified fish. And 14% had aquatic invertebrates, shrimp and plankton. Most of the brown trout with the empty stomachs were caught in the river above the reservoir. Brown trout in the reservoir had consumed fish, including a lot of goldfish and aquatic invertebrates. So there's an, Jay says there's an unbelievable population of uh, goldfish in the reservoir, and um, that's why they're so good, so big, and a great population of trout. So that's a little bit about the place. Now, you might be asking, so what? Because it's all behind a big gate behind big fence as well. You saw earlier on the Premier Victoria. He is committed to having a look at this and working with the right people through his Minister for Water, Minister for Fishing and Boating, and Minister for the Environment in trying to see if we can open up Tarrago to recreational fishing. Now, one of the things is, this is, this is a population of brown trout up to 10 years old. In fact, that was the oldest fish uh, that was aged in in the river, I think, uh, not the reservoir. And uh, it's a remarkable population and something that will need to be protected. So whether bags, size limits, all that sort of stuff for management requirements is unique to that fishery, it probably would be. It could even be a you know catch and release fishery only, but um, it's, it's too special to be locked up behind a gate and a big fence. So what's the plan? We've got a great report from the boys at Arthur Ryla uh, in Jason and old mate. Um, I'm going to go and pay a visit to the Premier Daniel Andrews at some time soon. He's been a little bit busy this year, but I'm thinking at some time, sometime soon, I'll be able to knock on his door and say, hey, Daniel, it's time to have a look at Tarrago Reservoir. And you know what? If we can get this place open, we just might have the best brown trout, wild brown trout fishery in Australia. If not, the Southern Hemisphere, right here, one hour from Melbourne. Thanks everyone. I look forward to seeing you in one year's time at the Talk Wild Trout Conference and uh, maybe giving you a date in a year's time on when this fishery will be open. Thank you very much.